Hi, welcome back to uh, the Jeepster build. I'm finally getting around to working on this windshield frame. Um, this area on both sides of the windshield, it just doesn't fit at all. Um, there's a big gap here. There's a little trim piece that, that goes right here and it's too far away. So when the manufacturer created it, they just twisted this piece to cover it up. So then it doesn't line up with the trim that's on the door. So not only is it too far upwards so that it's leaving a gap, but it's also too far inwards so that it leaves a gap here. And moisture just goes right into that area and there's a drain hole right next to this in the body where it just goes right down into the front panel next to the door and eventually ends up in the rocker panel. So naturally there's going to be rust in that area. Uh, fortunately with this vehicle being from a climate where there just wasn't a lot of acidic type rain and salt on the roads, I didn't get any rust issues, but I want to prevent that in the future. Plus, I want to just clean this up. So what I'm doing is I'm going to run a bead of weld along here. I've done it a couple of times already, and it's amazing how far off this really was. It was probably three-eighths of an inch off because I've done it twice, and it's still not tight enough, so I'm going to do it one more time. I've got enough material added to that now where I can uh, hit it with my grinder. I should be able to smooth this out and get it where I want. So this is where your skills as an artist <laughs> or a, a sculptor come into play. Um, and you just kind of have to trial and error, guess it, on and off, on and off, just like I have, build it up a little bit at a time, and if you go too far, grind it away. But I think I've got it now. Uh, I did the other side as well, so I put all metal filler along this edge. I've got just about no filler here maybe a sixteenth of an inch, and then it ramps up to about a quarter of an inch. You can go a half inch with the all metal. Um, I don't know if I'd ever want to do that, but a quarter inch you can do with just regular body filler. So I feel it really good about that. And I've gone in quite a ways. I'm in about a little over an inch into the body, tapering it off. So I've got a, a lot of surface area there where I don't have to worry about this breaking out. But essentially, it's just a wedge shape to fill that big gap. I, I kept debating on welding a piece in here. That probably would have made more sense now looking at it. I didn't think there would be that much material to close up that gap. But because this is in an area where there's no stress on the body, there's no movement, it's not like a door or a hood. So I feel really good about this. Wow, oh, this side looks amazing. Oh, all the gaps are perfect. Now, oh, you just need to bolt it all down and make sure everything lines up. This trim piece is perfect as well. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, I'll bolt this windshield down. It's, it's sitting a little high right here in the middle because I've had to lean it back to close up this gap. If I bolt it all down and this gap opens back up, I'm going to have to put a bead of, of weld right along here to close up that gap. I don't want to put filler on this area. All right, I, uh, I bolted the windshield all down. I've got all the gaps, everything is, is all tight. It's just, it's perfect. I couldn't have asked for better. 
this area right here, I've got a little bit of a low spot. When I put the trim on, it's, it's tied across the, the bottom, but there's a little dip right here that doesn't quite meet up with the door. So that's just a, a simple thin filler right here in this area. And, and then just blend it up into the side of the windshield egg pillar. That's awesome. While I had this off, there's, there's holes drilled and the A pillar on the other side where they probably mounted like a rear view mirror or something on it. It looked like they had mounted one on the door and then the wing window hit it. So they remounted it on the side of here and then it probably hit <laughs> when it opened the door. So they raised it up higher so that it would clear. So there's a whole bunch of holes that I have to weld over on that other side. Other than just a little bit of filler on this A pillar, this A pillar is done now and all the bodywork is finished. The only thing I have left now is the dash. Uh, and there's a lot of metal work I still need to do on the dash to get it perfected. And, and then a whole bunch of filler. I'll be doing a lot of kitty hair, fiberglass type uh, body filler on that. All right, I've got the ends of it all sanded and ground down. Uh, let's see if I've got this right. This side looks good. Check the trim piece. Trim's good. That looks awesome. Well, now that that task is finished, I just need to sand it so that it's ready for primer. I want to get the dash in and get all of the brake pedal and the clutch pedal and the gas pedal and the, the steering column and the seat, all that kind of revolves around the placement of the, the dash and, and the seat. So I need to get that dash installed and then I can start making all my dimensions and drilling holes and getting everything prepped. And the dash actually goes over the edges of the A pillars. So I had to have this finished before I could put the dash in. And to get the dash in, I have to have the doors propped open. On the dash, I have tabs that sit on top of these tabs. And then I've got bolts that go all along this edge. Okay, all of that lines up perfectly. The dash, the A pillars, the windshield, the doors, everything is back to the way I had planned it when I did this dash over a year ago. <laughs> and when I did the firewall, I mocked up the pedals, but I didn't really mock up the steering wheel because I needed seats. I need to have seats positioned so I know where those seats are going to be and then I'll know where to put the steering wheel in front of me. The pedals pretty much just went where they had to go. <laughs> and the, the clutch master cylinder, because I did a hydraulic clutch, the brake master cylinder, the brake booster, the way it clears the valve covers, I'll show you all that. Once I get it all mounted into place and make sure all of that works, and then I'll work on getting the steering column placed. Okay, well that will be it for this video. Appreciate you watching. Thanks again. Goodbye for now.